Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are out there in the world. You probably saw all the hype um, around the, the, this new trend that apparently is now out where People are just wearing these metaverse goggles around everywhere. This video, though, really kind of shocked me a bit. You have two people out to eat. They're wearing the goggles, and it's just like, it's wild to me that this is now becoming a big trend. At the same exact time that Neuralink just started their trials on actual humans. Now, yes, is there some benefits to Neuralink? Sure. Is there any benefits to this besides a major distraction away from reality? Just to make you live in this, this metaverse world? I mean, no. There's really no benefit at all to this. In my opinion, this is all a part of the elite's agenda. And you might say, Nick, come on now. Stop Stop throwing out the conspiracy theories. Stop throwing out this and that. Take the tinfoil hat off. But when you go back in time to the fourth industrial revolution, now this is from the World Economic Forum. This is January of 2016. Guys, this is eight years ago, almost a decade. And when we scroll down, and I've talked about this in the past already, we stand on the brink of a technological revolution that will fundamentally alter the way that we live, work, and relate to one another. Now, within this, what do they actually include? Well, first and foremost, they do talk about the digital revolution. That's been occurring since the middle of the last century. It is characterized by a fusion of technologies that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. Now, when they say that, they also incorporate pretty much everything that we have gone over on this channel in the last couple years artificial intelligence robotics the internet of things autonomous vehicles 3d printing nanotechnology biotechnology material science energy storage quantum computing and what they're really missing out on in this is augmented reality but they've covered that later on right and we know now from a lot of the recent posts from the BIS, which this is the central bank of central banks. I don't know why they're bringing these things up, but now they're talking about the metaverse. They're saying now the metaverse could hold promise in gaming, healthcare, and education. For it to be socially useful, payment systems need to be efficient and interoperable, accompanied by clear standards on data privacy, digital ownership, and consumer protection. Now, what's crazy about this, right, is this is what we've been saying about XRP and about payments themselves, right? In order for the elites to push their agenda, payments need to start getting faster. They need to be efficient. And now they're literally saying this in the same sentence as the metaverse holding promise for everything, essentially. Again, I'm not trying to say XRP is going to be the thing that cures everything, that fixes everything, but I do think that XRP will hold a significant role in the realm of finance globally, especially around central banks and banking itself. But they are talking about, in principle, retail fast payment systems, retail central bank digital currencies, or tokenized deposits could be designed to support services in the metaverse. To prevent virtual environments and money from becoming fragmented and dominated by powerful uh, pr private firms, public policy would need to support efficient, interoperable payments and provide clear standards on data privacy, digital ownership, and consumer protection. So when we really look at what's going on here, they are addressing the digital economy. They're addressing the metaverse. Now, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I will not be caught dead wearing this thing. I will never wear one of these. But... If my investments into certain cryptocurrencies like XRP or XLM or HBAR go up in value from the elites tapping into them to allow something like this to become a much larger trend, all, all right, I'll, I'll, that's it. 
Because again, I feel as though we are caught up in the idea that the herd is supposed to flip the switch and say, oh, we're not going to be adopting that. We're not going to be, you know, tapping into that because a lot of people are saying like, all right, CBDCs, we don't want them. Okay, nobody in crypto wants a CBDC. But we know that the herd is going to follow through and tap into it. Why do we know this? Go back to 2020. It was a clown show. What percentage of the, the global population fed into their nonsense? What percentage didn't? That's the line that everyone is missing. So when we talk about the metaverse and we're talking about all these people becoming a slave, if you will, to the metaverse, and we know that elites are pushing this heavy, and we know that payment systems need to be efficient in order for this to be a success, and we also know that payment systems themselves just need to be efficient because they are living in old age times now. We're talking about decades ago. They need to be ushered into the digital age. They need to be ushered into the future. So how do they do that? Well, they tap into things like XRP, like XLM. But also, right, when we talk about this, they also posted this as well. What is the potential economic impact of services in the metaverse? Widespread adoption of tech like VR and AR could mean a blurring of lines between tradables and non-tradables, greater cross-border integration, and new demands on payment services. Again, all of this is the same exact thing that they're bringing up. And then they also posted this. Starting now... Hyun Song Shin, which by the way, this is an individual that wrote a lot of those PDF files with uh, significant names from the IMF that, by the way, also note XRP and even XLM, discusses the challenges of realizing the promise of tokenization when applied to real world assets. In a speech at the US OCC Symposium on the tokenization of real world assets and liabilities. Hmm. Interesting, and this is the office of the comptroller of the currency. I'm interrupting this video just to let you guys know that Decent Wallet is holding a giveaway of 24 XRP right now for anyone that does purchase a Decent Wallet through my links down in the description below as well as in the comments below. But also, you can enter to win 2,024 XRP as well. You can only do this from February 8th through February 25th. The winner will be announced on March 11th on Decent Wallet's account on x so if you want to go follow them turn on notifications if you want to go and fill out this form on their website all you have to do is go to store.decentwallet.com and click the top section here where it says wishing for a radiant 2024 with xrp it will take you to this page specifically and there's a form on the second part down here that you just have to fill out and like i said on march 11th they will be announcing the winner and you will also get your 24 XRP from purchasing a decent wallet through my link right now. And you could save $89 off the double package and $20 off of the single package. And you can get your 24 XRP for free practically uh, by purchasing a decent wallet. And you can get that on March 6th. So if you guys do want to go check that out, links down in the description below as well as in the comments below. And with that being said, let's just jump back on into the video. Now, when we actually look up this uh, symposium, we could see a little bit of a breakdown here. Again, they just really look at the uh, robustness of financial settlements and things like that, really kind of just streamlining things, but also exploring the legal foundations for digital asset tokens, tokenization use cases, and risk management and control considerations. Um, but if you actually look at the agenda, we have this, and here is where you can actually see the opening remarks, the legal foundations, things like that. You can also see all of the uh, players that are tapped in here. Here's the academic papers on tokenization. Again, you can see some of the names um, tied to this. Here's the regulator panel as well. Again, all of the names. Uh, tokenization use cases. And when we look at this, right, like you have MasterCard, which by the way, the MasterCard is collaborating with Ripple on a lot of fronts. Uh, MIT's there. Uh, MIT has connections back to Quant. The DTCC's there. Connections back to XDC and a few other players, even R3, which te technically has um, some exposure to XRP. Um, but all of this is happening while most people are just completely missing it. Like, it's, it, it's crazy. But they keep pushing things to distract the public um, away from being free. I mean, honestly, when we look at the metaverse, I mean, if you really want to live in the metaverse outside of real life, I mean, it seems as though you're getting brainwashed by some crazy stuff. And I, I say that because, listen, the metaverse is cool and all, 
But I don't think that I would ever want my children or I would never even want to walk around with these things on. I mean, it just looks stupid, especially when you have people out to eat wearing them and looking like a, a robot or looking like a slave to this device that's, by the way, ugly um, that they're wearing. Maybe I'm wrong, though. But what do you guys think about this? I, I, I mean, I just want to know your opinion. But beyond that, right? We also have over here, the fourth industrial revolution, the future of the physical, digital, and biological world. This is from XRP Drops. This goes back to October, mind you. The key is to make the most rational conclusions from an irreversible future. This apocal change makes apocal financial decisions possible. Listen closely. The fourth industrial revolution, it's a fusion of the physical, the digital, and the biological world. It's changing not only what we are doing, it's changing who we are. It's really the notion of digital technology pervasively impacting every walk of life in every vertical industry on all parts of the globe. Whether it's information technology and the acceleration we see in artificial intelligence, a lot is happening. Society and how we're going to live is being defined right now. The speed is mind-boggling. What I particularly concerned about is how little the world is prepared. Harnessing this revolution requires the involvement of all stakeholders, from public and private sectors to academia and civil society. The World Economic Forum Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution Network ensures that the development and application of emerging technologies benefits both people and the planet. It is a network of centers for scalable impact, with locations in the United States, Japan, India and China, bringing together stakeholders to identify the impacts of these technologies, co-design innovative governance protocols and policy frameworks, and pilot them with partners around the world. If we are not innovative, if we're not creative enough, it will be very difficult to survive in this century. Humans and machines are assisting each other, augmenting each other with skills. Humanity itself will be changed with this super intelligence, and we are at the doorstep of that era. The technologies available today will impact and change healthcare forever. 52% of the encounters with our primary care physicians were handled virtually. Just a massive change. The network will work closely to share research, analysis and learning, and help design new technologies in ways that respect societal values. It's where innovation is happening, about how we guide this revolution. We can solve the many the social issues through the digital technologies. My hope is that we have a robust discussion for how this can truly help our world solve some of the hard-pressed challenges that we have today. Together, we can shape a future that truly benefits and empowers people. The world has changed. We can never, ever go back to yesterday. Now, as I have said, this is all the elite's plan in action. But again, I stress the idea that we don't need to live in the metaverse in order to get wealthy. We don't even need to touch the metaverse. In fact, like I said in the past, the metaverse is just a major distraction for the retail sector. They have distracted us through various things in the past. And again, this is something that you could easily look past. The metaverse is something that's not innovative. It's nothing new. All it is is making people live in a fake realm uh, away from reality, out of touch, missing out on major things. Just like how people are distracted by Netflix or by the Super Bowl and by all these things to miss the key things that they should be focusing on, which is guess what? We're on the cusp of a massive digital revolution and by the way the imf has been posting about these remittances they posted two videos the exact same videos three days apart and it's migrant workers sent 647 billion dollars back to their families in 2022 but they face high fees when sending money to their families our back to basics video highlights how improved remittance regulation and reduced costs could expand access to finance 
Hmm, where have I heard that from? Oh yeah, that's right. Ripple has been focused on this for a very long time. They have been trying to bank the unbanked. They've been trying to fill the gap in terms of those individuals that are not allowed access to finance. This has been a thing for a while. 1.7 billion, I think, was the last uh, time that I looked at it in terms of individuals that are unbanked or don't have access to finance. Yeah, now we see the IMF posting this at the same exact time, by the way, that the IMF uh, director, Kristalina Georgieva, is meeting with Christine Lagarde from the ECB, which, by the way, these are two prominent figures that have connected with Ripple in the past. The IMF and the ECB also have major documentation on Ripple and XRP. They were in the same room. Christine Lagarde was in the same room with Brad Garlinghouse next to prominent individuals from the IMF, from the BIS. I mean, it's crazy at this point to not come to the conclusion that Ripple's already embedded deep inside of this elite system and has direct ties to this digital revolution. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm wearing the tinfoil hat. But from all of the connections that I have, I have uh, gone through and all of the research that I've done, there is zero doubt in my mind. Zero doubt in my mind about XRP and about Ripple. But listen closely to this video and then I will wrap this video up. Hey, you're catching me at a good time. Now, there's a lot of stuff that I could spend this on. But before I do that, I'll send some of this off to my brother who can put it to good use. You see, there are hundreds of millions of people like me who work outside of their home country because sometimes people have to go where the opportunity is or where the instability isn't. That often means leaving families behind and earning a living elsewhere, but still sending money home for support. These money transfers are often called remittances. Communication and financial technology make it easier than ever to send money across borders. Let me show you. You pick the amount, pick the beneficiary, make sure all the information is correct, and send. Oh, that's my brother calling. Hey Alex, I just got the cash. It's just what I needed. Now I can pay for the doctor to look at my neck and get back to work. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Feel better. Thanks again. Sending money back home makes it possible for people who live in wealthier countries to help family pay for the basics, food, housing, education, and medical expenses. Remittances help reduce poverty by moving money where it can make bigger difference for the people and countries who receive it. This helps spur investment and entrepreneurship and build savings that can help promote growth and development. So while this amount may get me a dinner and a movie here, for my brother, it could help cover his rent or pay for those doctor's bills. In low and middle income countries, remittances can actually make up a good portion of economic activity, even the majority. For example, Mexico's remittances exceed revenue from oil exports. In Sri Lanka, they're greater than the value of the tea trade. And Egypt's remittances are worth more than its income from the Suez Canal. And they're also an increasing portion of the global GDP. In 2022, remittances amounted to 831 billion US dollars. And that's just through official channels. So the number is probably a lot bigger. This money mainly flows into low and middle income countries where it adds up to more than foreign investments and development aid combined. One downside for those countries though is the cost of sending money through a service. Some charge a steep fee up to 35%. Lowering the average service charge to just 3% would mean an extra $30 billion every year for low income and developing countries. And that's money that would be better spent on family and friends. Ah, that's my brother calling again. Hey, how are you feeling? Much better now, thanks to you. Yeah, I'm glad I could help. Say hi to everyone back home. And what's crazy is that this is what has been happening for, I want to say now, six years or so with Ripple. And it even goes back further be before that. But... This is what they've been trying to do with a lot of their partnerships. I mean, even if you look 
at some of the partnerships that they have with, and I know that this is going to spark a debate, but the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, that goes back a very long time ago, and that was all around banking the unbanked. And I know that that's a questionable partnership because everyone has their own thought process when it comes to that, but that's the elites. Like These elites are the ones pulling the strings. If they make us rich, they make us rich. It's as simple as that. We can utilize that wealth to make the world a better place. I've talked about this in the past as well. Um, but I do think that things are on their way. I've said it a million times. You're going to see this slowly but surely. We're now starting to see things in real life. And when I say that, I mean, you are literally witnessing people walking around, wearing these devices. And if you go back two years ago and you said this to someone, they'd be like, no way are people actually going to walk around like that. Now it's a big trend. Everyone's doing it. And that's how easy it is to persuade the general public to go and do things. You see it trending on TikTok or Instagram or this and that. And all of a sudden, everyone's doing it. That's how ridiculous society has become. That's how brainwashed society has become. So when we look at what the elites are pushing, when we look at what the elites are trying to do, this is all a part of the fourth industrial revolution. I've, I've said it a million times. This is not some conspiracy theory. It's actually happening and you need to be aware of this. So with that being said, if you guys did enjoy the video, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on because more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the page description below. And with that being said, this has been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.